Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be looking at how to use bold backgrounds in clean and simple cards. First off, I'm going to show you how I make these particular bold backgrounds less bold. And after that, I'll show you the cards that I made with the more muted backgrounds. So the first technique is very, very simple. It is cut down your background and include lots of white space on your card. So I've got this very orangey, shimmery piece. It's very bold. I think I made this one with pigment powders as part of my Pigment Powders 101 series. So all I've done with this is trim it down a little bit to create a panel that's going to cover just under half of the front of this four by six inch card blank. But before I stick the panel down onto my card blank, I wanted to give it a little bit of a border to make it look a little bit more finished. So I stuck it on some white cardstock and then trimmed it down. So as I say, there's a little white border around the outside. Once that was done, I then added my bright orange panel to the left hand side of the card. And now I've still got a nice bold pop of colour, but I've also got lots of white space so that that boldness of colour isn't quite as overwhelming as it would otherwise be. So on to technique number two, and that is to cover your bold backgrounds with vellum. Vellum is a translucent, sometimes plasticized paper. So you can see through it, but it does have the effect of toning down or muting the color or pattern behind it. You don't have to cover your whole background with vellum. You might just want to cover part of it like I did here. I used a wide strip of vellum to cover the middle portion of this patterned background. So you can still see some of the bold color running down the side, but the bit behind the vellum is muted. It is more subtle. Right, on to technique number three, and that is to add white paint through a stencil. White paint will have a similar effect to vellum. It will mute or tone down whatever you put it over. So in this case, I've got a very bright pink panel that I made with some DIY shimmer sprays. And to tone it down, I've put a hexagon stencil over the top and I'm using a sponge dauber to lightly sponge some white acrylic onto it. Now, the pigment powder that I used is water reactive which means that the white acrylic will absorb some of that color. So it won't look white, it will look pink, but it does have the effect of toning down all that boldness. And you also get the added bonus of having a pattern. So this one will have a hexagon pattern. And when you take the stencil off, you will still be able to see some of the bold color peeking through where the stencil protected the background from the white acrylic. You don't have to use a stencil though. You could just add white paint over your background without a stencil. You could brush it on with a paintbrush or you could do technique number four and that is to add white paint with a brayer. I love using a brayer to add paint in this way because you get a really interesting finish. The brayer doesn't perfectly brayer on the paint so you get some areas where the paint is thicker than others and some areas where there's hardly any paint at all it gives a variegated look but you still get that toning down of the bold background on to technique number five now and that is to add texture with an embossing folder and then scrub off some of the color so I ran this very bright pigment powder panel through my cuttle bug with a circle pattern embossing folder. Then I cut it in half so that I can show you how the two halves compare when I finish scrubbing. And to scrub my panel, I've got a nail buffer and I've sped this up quite considerably because it does take a bit of elbow grease and a bit of time, 
but you can scrub the color off of the raised parts of your embossed image and that has the effect of toning down the background. And finally we have technique number six which is to add texture with an embossing folder and then brayer on some white paint. When you bray it on paint in this way, the paint will only go on the raised areas of your embossed paper. The debossed areas will remain the bold color. So you get toning down of most of the bold colors, but some of the boldness can still peek through. And here we have all the cards that I made with the backgrounds that I toned down today. These two cards were made with the background that I chopped in half. This was the one where I placed the orange panel to the left hand side of the card and introduced this white space here. To tone down the background even further, I layered on a double fish tailed banner in vellum and then a smaller one in white cardstock. And that again introduces a bit more white space. And then I added a gold foiled butterfly and a thank you popped up on craft foam and some gold foil circles with some morning dew crystal drops from Nuvo. These dry clear so they look a bit like dew or raindrops. I also added some on the body of the butterfly here to give the body a bit of dimension. And I did much the same thing here. I did actually run the other half of this through an embossing folder. So it's got a bit of texture on it. And we've got a vellum banner to do some toning down, a bit more white, and then a sentiment and the butterfly. So instead of having one big orange panel, we've got two smaller orange panels with some white space to give somewhere for the eye to rest so that that bright bold color isn't overwhelming. This is the card that I added the big band of vellum to. I also added a white rectangle and a white doily to reduce the amount of background that's showing. I did the same thing with the sentiment and the embellishments. And having the gold really draws the eye because it's bright and sparkly and shiny. It draws the eye makes it the focal point which pushes the bolder background into the background further so that's another thing you can do is have a really eye grabbing attention grabbing focal point and that will push the background into the background this was the one i did with stenciling and white acrylic again i added a square of vellum so combining techniques stenciling with white acrylic to tone down the pink and then adding vellum on top, which tones it down even further, and then adding some more white to bring that to the front. To introduce white space, I cut my pink panel down into a square, added a white border, and then made sure I had a really wide white border. So again, we've got muting down with white acrylic, muting down with vellum, and then introducing white space to keep that boldness contained plus we've got the shimmery shiny focal point and having a black sentiment draws the eye to that area again because there's no other black on the card our eyes automatically go to this area because of the black and the gold that pull the attention here's the one i made by brayering on some white acrylic onto a bright green panel Again, I've introduced white space around the outside by cutting this down, making it smaller and having this white space to give the eye somewhere to rest. And we've got the bold sentiment and butterfly so that the eye knows where to look. And here we have the bit that I ran through the embossing folder. This is the one where I scrubbed off the colour and this is the one where I brayed on some white acrylic. Same principles of introducing white space, making the bold background smaller and layering up a attention grabbing focal point. This one is slightly different in that I've put the black stamped thank you down here. It's not popped up on 
foam tape or part of the embellishment cluster it's down here so it grabs the eye but then these little embellishments and the butterfly draw the eye up here so we've got a lovely pop of toned down colour in the background and a nice diagonal flow well done if you've made it this far into the video as a little bonus for you i'm going to show you another couple of ways of toning down strong or bold backgrounds so i'm going to create a bold background using two distress oxides i've got broken china and salty ocean And I've chopped that in half, well roughly half, so that we can do two different things. I've put one of the halves on my grit mat just to keep it still while we work on it. And I'm going to tone down this colour by spritzing it with water, giving it a good coat of water. I've given it a couple of seconds to reactivate the ink and now I'm going to roll over it with some paper towel. And now I've got a lighter, more muted background. So if you've got water reactive inks, you can lift some of the colour to tone down that background by spritzing it with water and soaking it up with a paper towel. I'm going to do that for a second time to see if we can tone it down any further. So you can see I have managed to lift even more ink off of there. So it's even more toned down now. And in a similar vein, you can get a stencil and you could spritz water through it, mop it up with a paper towel, and that would lift colour, but leave you with the pattern of a stencil. But if you're using, say, mixed media paper, which is quite a robust paper, you can get a wet baby wipe and rub over your stencil. Don't squeeze it and get lots of water on it. Just gently rub over it and you can go over it a few times. As I say, this is best on say mixed media or watercolor paper because it's robust and it won't pill when you rub it like that. And then you can take off your stencil and you can leave it to dry naturally or dry it with a hairdryer. And there you have, again, a toned down, more muted background with a bit of pattern on it. And that's today's video done and dusted. I do hope you've enjoyed it and that it's given you some ideas on how you can use bolder backgrounds in your clean and simple cards. If it has, please do let me know in the comments, like and subscribe, and I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.